Hello and welcome. Did you know that many cities suffer from urban heat problems and climate change is likely to make the situation worse? And did you know that urban water bodies like canals, ditches or ponds do not necessarily cool their surroundings? That during summer nights they can even have a warming effect? Urban designers are confronted with these questions while dealing with the design of urban water bodies. So, how can we give water a more active role in cooling the city? The Real Cool project caters for this demand. Real Cool stands for Really Cooling Water Bodies in Cities. It is a research project for developing design prototypes for water bodies that actually cool their surroundings. These design prototypes are animated 3D scenes showing different combinations of water with shading, evaporation and ventilation strategies. Now, our prototypes are not precursors to a product. They are conceptual frameworks. We don't want to tell designers what they should design. We want to tell them how to design. We are creating our prototypes through a research through designing method made up of a preparation stage and four iterative loops. I will explain how we use it and ensure true co-creation through the different loops. In the preparation stage, we defined our test beds. These are common Dutch urban water bodies upon which the prototypes are based. Afterwards, each loop repeats a sequence of three stages. Designing, when we experiment different combinations of shading, evaporation and ventilation around water. Testing, when we test the cooling effects of these combinations and assessing, when we assess the fit between the cooling effect of the prototypes and overarching urban design criteria. Co-creation is introduced in workshops with our stakeholders during the assessing stages. Together, we discuss the fit between the cooling effect and aesthetics, function, costs, maintenance requirements and health. We bring together meteorologists, water experts and representatives from consultancies, design offices, water boards, health institutes and municipalities. In each loop, we involve a different set of stakeholders. For instance, in the preparation stage and first loop, meteorologists, water experts, consultancies, design offices and municipalities came in for selecting the test beds and discussing the cooling effects of the designs. In the second loop, water boards and health institutes joined in for discussing water storage and impacts on health. We use different means to communicate the design prototypes, from plans, sections and 3D visualizations, to physical models with which we can play with the design interventions. This helped everybody to understand what the design's ideas were and enabled an inclusive discussion. Experts and non-experts were brought to the same level. Now, how do we make sure that the inputs of our stakeholders really fit the designing process? How do we make it a true co-creation process? First of all, we assure participants that they have a central role in the research as co-creators of our designs. Second, they can design with us in the workshops, but we don't force them to do so when they don't feel comfortable with designing. So we create various ways of inviting people to comment and ask questions about the designs. And from all gathered thoughts, expressed either sketches or notes, we retrieve objective criteria for refining our prototypes. But how about the involvement of citizens? People were invited to give their feedback on our designs through an online visual inquiry. But we do this at a different moment than that of the workshops. Why? With the stakeholders, we aim to have technical feedback on fundamental research criteria. Together, we work on the scientific validity of the prototypes. Citizens may not be familiar with these criteria, and we have to ensure the validity of our research next to experts. So with the general public, we look for a different kind of feedback. We want to know how people like our designs based on their empirical experience. 
after we have discussed all fundamental technical criteria with the stakeholders, we work out the attractiveness of our designs together with citizens. Although the project is not finished yet, we can already share some findings about our co-creation process. First, involving stakeholders in different design loops needs to be planned and orchestrated very well. Second, we have to determine why and when to engage people. If we really want people's opinions to fit the designing process, we have to think what should they answer to and how are they able of answering. Finally, it is fundamental to find creative ways of enabling people to say what they think and why do they think like that. Making designs transparent and discussable amongst all is paramount. We hope that our experiences from the Real Cool project can inspire you and we hope that you can embark on co-creative design in the future too.